Russian Foreign Ministry says that the UN Human Rights Council's decision on Syria is biased and will not contribute to the political process in the country. And security forces clash with a terrorist group in Aleppo countryside, inflicting heavy losses on them. Terrorist Ali Jassim Muhammad confesses to participating in massacres and weapons smuggling. Competent authorities clash with an armed terrorist group in the Azaz area north of Aleppo as it was attacking citizens and perpetrating killing, robberies and abducting acts and vandalizing the public and private properties. An official source in Aleppo governorate said that the clash resulted in the killing and wounding of a number of terrorists and destroying six cars equipped with machine guns and a stolen ambulance. The source added that among the dead terrorists were Anas Ismail Hamdouch, Ismail Farouk Fendi, Ismail Abdel Majid, Ahmed Nafia Aquino, Hussein Naimi, Hilal Hassan Hamadi, Ahmed Najjar, and Muhammad Al Khatib. In Homs, security forces foiled last night an infiltration attempt of an armed terrorist group from Lebanon at a Serhania area in Al Aqsar countryside. A source in the governorate said that the clashes resulted in the killing and wounding of scores of gunmen. Corporal Muhammad Al Dakhil was martyred, and three security men were wounded in the clashes. The source added that security forces attacked a hideout for terrorists groups in al Aqsar countryside and clashed with terrorists inflicting heavy losses upon them and killing terrorist Ahmad Ghalib al-Hashish. Meanwhile, a terrorist group set fire in a field near al Hula area. Gunmen opened fire against firefighter trucks which came to extinguish the fire causing the death of citizen Abdul Hamid Fendi and the wounding of another. Terrorist Ali Jassim al Mahmoud confessed to being a member of an armed terrorist group that was responsible for many massacres against civilians and law enforcement, including the attack on Al Khalidiyah Infirmary, where they killed everyone inside it and filmed the bodies to use the images to accuse the army of their crime. <laughs> I was born in Deir Zor in 1980 and lives in Bab al Draib, Homs. I visited Saudi Arabia in early 2011 and came back to Syria in May 2011 when I started participating in protests and met a man named Mansour al Atasi, Abu Mutia, who signed me to coordinate protests. Later, I bought a rifle and joined gunmen who were using a school in Bab al Draib as their headquarters. The 80 gunmen were led by Nazir Mando, who put me in charge of a blockade in the area. About 300 gunmen and I from various neighborhoods attacked Al Khalidiyah Infirmary from all sides using RPG launchers and rifles, killing 40 of the people in the infirmary and kidnapping the remaining 10. My colleagues and I gathered the bodies, stripped them naked, bound their arms and photographed them to pass the attack as a massacre committed by security forces and the army. Two men from Yemen and one from Lebanon were among the gunmen in this area and they were in charge of manufacturing improvised explosive devices and installing them in cars that were later detonated in neighborhoods where the people support the government. I was part of an attack by 150 gunmen at a security checkpoint in Homs that was making the gunmen's movement difficult. I accompanied a man to their zoo to buy weapons where we met a man working as a driver on the Homs Der Zor road and asked him to provide 10 rifles and 10,000 rounds. And two days later, the man brought us 12 automatic rifles and the rounds we asked for. I fled Homs for fear of being arrested and went to Lebanon in November 2011, contacting Nazir Mando's brother in Tripoli, who rented me a house where I stayed with a man named Mohammed Ayrout from Banyas. During my stay at that house, I met another man from Banyas and Sheikh called Salim al rifai who provided support to gunmen. I met Lebanese MP Khalid al-Dahir, who supports the gunmen in Tripoli. Afterwards, I was part in smuggling weapons to Syria, serving as a mediator and giving 12 rifles and a night vision scope to smugglers, along with 1,200 US dollars, which were sent to Nazir Mando in Homs. 
I also traveled to Jordan from Lebanon, meeting several opposition figures through Zaki al Drubi and Abdul Rahim Darausha, and that the latter organized protests in front of the Syrian embassy in Amman, where many opposition figures met in addition to Yasser Abu Hilala, the director of Al Jazeera office. I asked Abu Hilala to provide me with communication devices to send him reports from Syria. The opposition figures and gunmen would register at the refugee commission to receive money, and I did likewise and received funds. I went back to Lebanon, then returned to Homs, carrying three Thuraya satellite phones sent by Amin Mendo to his brother. I remained in Homs for seven days, then returned to Lebanon, and was once again asked to return to Homs to deliver two Thuraya phones and 20,000 US dollars to Nazir. The Russian Foreign Ministry said that the meeting of the so-called Friends of Syria group in Paris is unilateral, politically wrong and immoral because this group is relying exclusively on just one part of the opposition. In a statement it issued, the ministry's spokesperson, Alexander Lukashevich, said that Russia, China and other countries that are bound by friendship to Syria refuse to join the ranks of those friends for the aforementioned reasons. Lukashevich stressed that being friends with only one part of the Syrian opposition will just lead to intensifying contradictions and confrontations within Syria and make the stances of the conflicting sides in Syria more extreme, which can only lead to continuing violence and more tragedies. He said that there is an impression that some of those who participated in the meeting in Geneva on June 30th aren't taking the responsibilities which are entitled, entitled by the resulting document seriously, noting that the final document issued by the meeting stipulates for all sides of the work group to work to encourage all sides in Syria to fully implement the plan of the UN envoy to Syria, Kofi Annan. He added that instead they present theatrical and political propaganda shows that are similar to conferences of political parties in which the fate of Syria is discussed and in the absence of its main representatives and loud calls are made for the opposition to go into battle to undermine the Syrian leadership, referring that the abundant financial and economical support is given to the opposition with signs indicating the possibility of supporting and resorting to the use of force scenario. He went on to stress that Moscow adheres precisely to the plan for peaceful settlement of the Syrian crisis by the Syrians themselves without foreign intervention and that general directives for such a settlement were laid down in Geneva. Lukashevich affirmed the need to unite the Syrian opposition and initiate dialogue with the government, which would allow the Syrians to decide upon their country's fate independently and democratically. Within the framework of Syria's sovereignty, independence, national unity and territorial integrity. The Russian Foreign Ministry underlined that the UN Human Rights Council decision on Syria is biased, adding it will not help launch a political process in the country. In Russia Today's site, they, they quoted the Russian ministry as saying in a statement that the context of the decision did not include a condemnation of the armed opposition's violence, once referred to by the head of the UN monitoring mission in Syria, Robert Mood. It said that during Geneva meeting on June 30th, it was very important to keep a constructive atmosphere and provide conditions for a continuous work with the Syrian sides in order to stop violence and launch the political process. But the owners of the draft resolution of the Human Rights Council have adopted another way, presented a document away from the agreed-upon stance in Geneva. The Organization for Economy and Development in Europe asked the Turkish authorities to encourage the freedom of expression instead of suppressing and oppressing it. After the increasing reports of imprisoned journalists came out during last year, 
The media representative Dunya Miyatakovic said the Turkish government has to encourage the freedom of expression through facilitating better circumstances for a more free discourse related to all topics. Miyatovic called on the Turkish government to withdraw the accusation against the Turkish journalist Ahmed Sik, who has been accused by the Turkish government along with 12 other journalists of conspiring against the government. Sik had been released last March after a year of his imprisonment. He still faces a 15-year sentence. The OCDE during April announced that the number of detained journalists in Turkey reached 95, while there were only 57 a year earlier. The Turkish government, headed by Recep Tayyip Erdogan since years, still represses and puts arbitrary measures against the journalists who oppose its political uh, policies, as it often imprisons them and accuses them of conspiring against the state. And with this, we conclude our news bulletin for today. For more news and details about Syria and the region, you can visit our website in English, www.syrianonline.sy. Stay with us after the break. Vanny